met John when I moved here in 1972, although I was busy with two little boys at that time. But he was uh, the state rep for the third Hampshire district before he moved to the state senate. So I, th I took my job in the, in the legislature at, in January of, uh, of 1969. And then for the next 44 years, uh, served first two terms in the, in the House of Representatives uh, in, in Boston, and then ran for the Senate. When he ran for Congress, an ad agency that he hired came up with a wonderful slogan for him. It was John Over, a workhorse, not a show horse. Transportation and, uh, and housing and urban development were my, the one that I chaired. Whenever we were in the majority in those years, I would be the person who was driving uh, all of the uh, uh, policy issues from the, uh, from the, the uh, from funding point of, point of view and giving out uh, all the uh, earmarks that were being delivered in those days to all of the Democratic members, the, the, the senior Republican on the same subcommittee would, uh, would give out uh, monies to all of the Republican members, but I was the one that was, I, I, had, I had dealings all over the country with every one of the members of my party when we were in, in the majority. I think a lot of us in this area took pride in having someone like John Over, not someone like John Over, having John Over as our representative in Congress uh, because he was a workhorse and not a show horse. I came home from Washington DC in 2001 and I'd been home about six months when I read in the morning paper that he wanted, he had hiked on our timberland, he loved it so much he wanted the federal government to own it. I thought it would be very nice to, to, for the National Scenic Trail to go up over the old Metacom and Adnock Trail and would go over Brushy Mountain. She had different ideas. She wanted to keep her forest, working forest going. So we finally figured out how to go around it. So where everybody's happy. I think everybody's happy. When we had offset goals and he was in Congress, I never guessed that we would be working together to make sure that forests and the forest products industry was viable. And um, he has become a very good friend, and I'm proud to say that. There are some politicians, as you all know, who are sort of all show, uh, who do very well in front of cameras and in front of big crowds, but don't really do their homework. John is the opposite. He He's a former chemistry professor at the university, so he's an academic, and he's used to researching and reading and learning everything he can about whatever topic he will be voting on. I, my whole political life depended upon the massive votes that Amherst provided to keep me going. I'm very grateful for that. I'm also very grateful for, to, to my, my wife. My wife was the first woman on the faculty at Amherst College. She was really unique. She, I have never known anybody who could uh, keep more balls in the air and not lose uh, any of them. Every time that I was, I was flagging and uh, getting, getting tired or a little bit of loss of confidence or whatever it was, she was always right behind me, right behind me. Uh, I'm in my sixth year of retirement, and uh, by the time the six years of retirement, uh, people 
say, John who, you know? <laughs> <laughs>